How's it going, everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming. Welcome back, and thank you for joining me for Let's Make a Game 2018 edition, where we use RPG Maker MB Engine to make a sim RPG game called Natural Explorers. Let's take a look at some of the comments that have been made over the last episode. Big episode yesterday. Today won't be as long, because we had all weekend to make the Monday episode. Chris History said he would like to be added as a corpse that gives the player a useless item. I really hate when things are awarded that have no purpose, but maybe we'll make one exception. I don't know if that'll... Sheepsicle says we should add more food variants and limit the player's inventory space and also check out a couple of plugins. We'll check these plugins out. I don't like the idea of limiting the inventory space because this game is going to require tons of items unless I do some sort of like logistics based game where you have to transport your supplies from one town to another, you know, and it becomes a menu management, item management game, which I'm not trying to make. I want to make a simulation RPG game, not just a sim item management game. We'll see how that plays out. Erwin Tingson suggests we add a hunter or a poacher's camp where the player can join hunting events to gain trophies and additional things for the house upgrades for stats and whatnot. That's a good idea, Erwin. And I'll scroll up to see some of the other people who have added extra things. If you would like to pause the video and look at some of the other comments, you can do so. All right, let's close this. Save our comments. All right, you probably noticed by now I have a new map on the screen here. We have created the beginning of the Endless Dungeon where I've used the first seed material tile set to decorate a bit. I've used some artwork I found on the RPG Maker web or this orc. I've given him an approach the player movement. He's just basically going to interact with the player. When he touches the player with the trigger event touch, it'll start a battle. This is just to test our battle system. I've added several new resources to the project. Lots of maybe used stuff. I've requested permission from several different people. Many of the art assets, the majority of them actually, are public domain and free to use for commercial projects. Project, but we added some new animations from Hade Sin, his Season 0 and Season 1 pack, a new battle background from Kyle Dove on DeviantArt. I've requested permission. I'll publish the game with it in it if he gives me permission. Otherwise, it's educational. We've set up our dungeon initializer auto run, which is just a simple event that does the things that we need to happen so that the dungeon runs as it's supposed to, as of setting up switches, controlling variables, setting battle backgrounds, turning off weather. Whatever we're going to do will be done inside the dungeon initializer. Right now, I've just put in a battle background and erased the event so that every time we enter into this dungeon, it reruns this event event and erases it. The transfer event goes and the final event is a transfer event which transfers to the village. I've made the cave in the village go to the endless dungeon. I've added some more event mini label to the events and I've had to be clever about where I place them. Here's just a blank event that holds the event mini label that it doesn't get cut off the screen. Let's jump into the game and see how the dungeon and the new event mini labels look. The traveling merchant now has an event mini label. The trees have an event mini label. I'm going to add an event mini label for the door when we add it or the player's house. The blank event up here is actually holding the mini label for this tree. If we were to buy this tree, we can have that going, but if we put the mini label right here, it gets cut off and it'll say citrus tree plus and then it'll be cut off the screen. If I had to move that, it's a little trick you can do. Let's go into the dungeon and have a look at the dungeon. Very nice. This will be where we can set up our system. The player can come in here, use this as like a controller event where we can have the player warp and maybe set up custom dungeons. The player can select some parameters and then a dungeon can be generated based on those parameters. The player can put in like water, then like a goblin. With those two parameters, it can generate a dungeon that spawns goblins inside a water cave or something like that. And I'm thinking about putting some sort of cost to generate a dungeon. Also some reward for clearing the dungeon or completing the dungeon. I'm trying to get away from using straight lines like this. Of course, there's going to be some. I like the FSM tile sets because you get certain tiles like this that let you have angles. It looks a little bit different and it's not just like a straight box, which is really cool. I like the idea of making the caves not like just boxes. It's very simple. My mapping is not great. I know that. I think with the first seed material, I'm going to improve my capability because I have better tools on hand to design better maps. So let's take a look at our battle system. We only have one enemy in the game. We only only have one skill. I've had to add probably a dozen plugins in order to make the battle system set up. Pianfly's Battle Engine Core and the Action Sequence Pack. Of course, there's no sequencing yet. It's pretty simple. I did create a custom animation for 
for the attack. And I'm using animated side view enemies plugin to have all the enemies be animated. And luckily there are some free to use side view battlers that I'm using from the RPG Maker web forums. I'm using hidden ones side view battlers. And there's the link right there. Really, really good. Huge selection of side view battlers. Hidden one is really awesome in that there's multiple variants of these side view battlers. I plan to stick with hidden one style in the battle system for now. I want to start the player with at least one ability for each category, one skill for each category. Since we have a tech and we have an ability class, I'm going to design one tech and one ability for the player to start with at level one. As you get to a higher level, we'll always take the same amount of experience to get to the next level. That'll help me decide on how many battles the player needs to fight at level 30. It'll be the same at level 40. Other incentives to why the player wouldn't want to just smash on super weak enemies because they may get more item rewards for fighting. Because So if they can kill harder creatures, they would get the same amount of experience, so it would take the same amount of time, but they would be getting better items for the harder enemies. I'm still working on an idea for how to make the experience and level system balance and work out. I did receive some good comments about a bug inside this system. Right here, when we check to see if we have a thousand coins, it deducts a thousand coins before it checks to see if we have the stones. We can end up paying a thousand coins and not have the thing set up. So it, it was a bug here where we would press this, we don't have the stones, it would consume a thousand coins and not give us anything in return. So I fixed that. We can jump into the game engine now and look at how I fixed that. In order to fix that, when compared from the last video, I've removed the change gold from here to here that it checks if we have a thousand gold. If we do, it will store the number of stones we have in variable stone count. Then it'll check to see if we have 20 stones in our inventory. Once it checks to see that we have all of the items required to proceed, it removes all those items at the same time, not in installments, so that it stops the player from wasting resources attempting to create something but not having one resource. Thank you for the comment shining the light on that bug. Let's look at the database where I have added the light blade weapon. I've added the plugin Yangfly's weapon animation plugin. This lets us create a folder inside of the IMG called weapons. Draw different images for the weapons. Go to game, open folder, and inside the IMG folder we create a new folder called weapons. Inside here we can add new images and these images can be used to draw different weapon attacks when we swing. When we attack with our weapon we use the beam sword light image. So we're using that plugin to do that and in order to make that work we're using a note tag weapon image and then we're referencing the name of the PNG file here. I've added a new element called energy and I've put icons in front of them in case I add Yanfly's status menu or I call upon a scene that's going to look at the elements. There's nothing special about this sword except for it doesn't do physical damage, it does energy damage and it's applying 10 strength and 10 speed which is attack power and agility. I'm not giving it a price because I don't want the player to sell it. We're going to create some armors just to add a little bit of defense which has been translated to endurance in this game. What I'm going to be doing is removing the magic defense, the idea of spells use magic defense, simplify it so that endurance defense which has been renamed to endurance is the stat that's going to be used to reduce the damage from attacks and magic attacks. Once we've created the white shirt, simple design that provides some protection. It gives three defense or endurance. We're going to award the player to start with it. So the player will start with a light blade and a white shirt. We'll probably offer a head upgrade and a relic upgrade quickly within the first dungeon or second dungeon in order to give the player a sense of progression early on. Here's the enemy and how I'm designing the enemy is I only put one image inside the SV enemy and the enemies folder. I'm using the side view battle system so I don't even need this inside the enemies folder but I have this one image, a placeholder image, which is actually an image from Akashix but I'm not going to be using it in the game. It's just going to be used as a placeholder so when I add the troops I can actually have some sort of visual representation. So the enemy, I haven't done any work on the enemy besides pick the sprites. I want the beginning enemies to be very easy to kill, like one or two hits to kill. So I'm going to leave the stats very, very basic, just like that. It's set up just like I want. I'm adding a plugin called Yanfly's Weapon Unleash, which is going to let me replace our attacks with other skills and actually have different skills happen when we attack. So I kind of want to make a special attack that can happen when the player does a basic attack, I want to make one skill for a tech and I want to make one skill for an ability.
I'm going to make this technique called Searing Slash require 50 TP, but for now it's going to cost zero so that we can use it and test it. It'll be an HP damage that deals energy. I plan to add Yanfly's Elemental Core plugin to have skills that do multiple elements, but it's not necessary right now. We're just starting off. If our attack is ATK times 4 minus defense times 2, I'm going to have Searing Slash be a little bit stronger. ATK times 5 minus defense times one with the ability to critical. And we'll give it just a little bit more variance. Occasion will be battle screen and the scope will be, we can have it do all enemies. I think that would make sense. It's going to cost us 50 tech points. We need to design an animation for Searing Slash. So let's do that. I'm going to take a random one, something that's got like an attack. We'll go with this one. Something that's got two images as well. That usually helps too. Paste it here and I'm gonna replace the images This is a sound effect that I made in Audacity. It's the womb sound effect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, and let's make an ability that will restore our HP using our MP. We'll call it first aid. It's pretty simple. And we'll make this cost five of our MP, which I'm renaming to AP for ability points. Asian always scope one ally. We're gonna have it restore half of our HP. We'll create an animation for it as well. Now let's award the player with this tech and ability. At level one, they will start with Searing Slash and First Aid. That way we don't have an empty menu. We don't have to worry about some workaround to get rid of the menu. I'm going to see if the Skill Sprite note tag works with the current set of plugins I have or if I'm missing something that I need another plugin for the Skill Sprite note tag. We're gonna scale them up. They're probably gonna look pixelated, but we'll see what happens. Let's test out our new abilities and techs. I think a good placement for a treasure chest would also be down here. All right, Searing Slash unleashes an attack with pure energy damage. It's not using the animation. Skills. We created an animation for it and it's not using it. So let's select that. We're going to have it require TP as well, but we'll keep it at zero for now. It'll be a certain hit, which will be different from the physical attack. So since we're spending 50 TP on it, we'll never miss with it. Same thing with the heal. I do plan to add action sequencing for the abilities. That's another reason why I want to keep the number of skills given to a low amount to minimize the work that goes into creating action sequencing sequencing because that could be very time consuming. Let's test these out. Searing Slash. Yeah, we'll have to action sequence it so that it doesn't look like he has his arms wide open when he does it. We'll have him drawing his sword and flying across the screen. Let's guard for a round and get some default attacks by the enemy and we'll try our ability first aid out. Okay, we need to change it from screen to center. Do that as well. And I'll change this event to battle process against two haunting memories. The scale sprite seems to be working. And it hits both of them. Nice. Well, let's try our ability. First aid. Nice. We'll have to create some enemy abilities as well. Searing Slash, and we win.
That's going to do it for this episode, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you do enjoy this series, please remember to give this video a thumbs up. Like, favorite, share, subscribe to the channel if you're new here, or if you've been watching for a while but haven't hit that sub button, why not? Please do that. If you guys want to come hang out, we have a Discord server. Come and talk with us, chat with us. We'd love to hang out with you and see what you've been up to, share your work with other people, and see what other people have been up to. If you'd like to support what I do on this channel, please consider backing me on patreon.com slash driftwoodgaming. That would be highly appreciated if you do that. Remember to stay awesome, guys. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.